In the last video, we were applying Newton's method to approximate a root of a function, and towards the end of the video, I showed you that Newton's method has a weakness to it. And in this video, I want to go over a few weaknesses of Newton's method. So we're going to talk about a few weaknesses of Newton's method. And again, this isn't to scare you away from using Newton's method. You saw in the previous videos just how good of an approximation Newton's method can give you. So Newton's method is still a wonderful tool, but knowing some of its weaknesses can help us be a little wiser in applying Newton's method and be cognizant of some ways that it could fail. So uh, just going through a few weaknesses we saw in the last video that one of the weaknesses is when our initial guess is at a critical point, is at a critical point, at a critical point. And we saw we had this function in the last video, y is equal to x cubed minus 2x plus 1. And we saw that when we let our initial guess be equal to negative square root of 2 thirds, that when we come up here, and again, what is Newton's method doing? It's making a tangent line and finding the x-intercept of it. But when we make a tangent line at a critical point, like this maximum value here, we end up with a horizontal tangent line. So it will never, it will never cross the x-axis. So that's why Newton's method fails there. A, a second way that Newton's method could, uh, could not work out is we could actually end up approximating the wrong root. The wrong root. And let's just say you're, you're doing some physical problem and you know your answer must be positive and you end up, okay, we're going to use Newton's method here and we want this positive root. So you end up with an initial guess just shy of this, this local minimum point, just shy of this critical point here. And you end up making a tangent line for it. So let's see what that looks like. It's going to be a really flat tangent line. Something like that. Something like that. Right. Right there. Okay. Not perfect, but just a sketch. So you get this really flat tangent line. Okay. And then you come up here and you're still applying Newton's method after that. And again, you still wanted this positive root. But Newton's method sent you all the way over here, and then you end up making a, another tangent line because you keep applying Newton's method, and what you'll find is now you're making a tangent line here. And you keep doing this, and you end up approximating this negative root. You never wanted that root, so you could end up approximating the wrong root. So you need to be really careful about your initial guess using Newton's method, or this could happen. And then lastly, uh, one other thing that I wanted to touch on, another weakness. Maybe we can scroll down a little bit. Another weakness is called a thing we're going to call, let's, let's make that legible. <laughs> a thing we're going to call an oscillating point. An oscillating point. Oscillating point. And graphically, I'm going to throw up a new graph to show this. So uh, this is going to be uh, this graph here. Well, y is equal to x cubed minus x. And what the oscillating point says is, okay, we're going to, we pick an initial guess, but this initial guess, when we apply Newton's method, ends up, uh, ends up going somewhere else, making, finding the x-intercept. And then it, when we apply Newton's method there, it just comes right back to our initial guess. And it keeps doing this over and over and over again. It keeps oscillating between the same two points, never progressing towards a root. And it kind of gets stuck in this cycle. Now, in this class, when we ask you to find an oscillating point, they are only going to be with functions that look like this where they're, they're odd functions that are going through the origin. They're only going to look like this, and we are going to show you how to find an oscillating point. Real quick, maybe you want to pause the video and, and think about that. How would you go about finding an oscillating point for this function? All right, let's, let's see how it's done. So a, a few things. This is a special type of function. This is an odd function. It's going through the origin, and the cool thing about it is, remember, Newton's method is making tangent lines. So tangent lines, are, the, the slope of them are, is the derivative. So if we were to throw up a derivative graph of this function here, I have a derivative graph. Let me grab it right here. So this is the derivative graph. This is 3x squared minus 1. And what this is saying is, okay, you pick any point on this original function. So let's just say 
one half and negative one half. And you look at their, their values on the function, you have something like this. These points have the same exact slope. And you can see that in this derivative graph. This is a parabola. So you pick out x is equal to one half and negative one half. You can see they have the same slope. So what, what, why does that matter to us when we talk about Newton's method and finding an oscillating point? Well, these two points here have the same slope. So when we make tangent lines and find their x intercepts, they are going to have a, the same, they're going to be equidistant from the origin. So this, this x intercept here, I can show that to you from the tangent line is going to be somewhere over here. So let me pull up a tangent line. Let's see here. I am saying this. So something like that. And then let me copy this guy and move this guy up, put it at, put it up here like that. And it looks something like that. Okay. Go back to my pen tool. So you can see they're going to be intersecting the X axis at the same points intersecting the x-axis at the same points. So now, using this property that we know that equidistant points here, when we make tangent lines for them on this type of function, that they're going to have equidistant x-intercepts. Now, the oscillating point is saying, okay, we need to find the point in which we take, in which we apply Newton's method at it, and when we make a tangent line, it needs to intercept the x-axis. It needs to intersect the x-axis at exactly negative the value in which we based our tangent line at. So let me put that in notation, and hopefully that will clear things up. So this is regular Newton's method. Let me put the x sub 1 in blue. So this is equal to what we've seen so far with Newton's method. x naught minus f of x naught over f prime of x naught, okay? And what I'm saying, the oscillating point has the characteristic that x1 is negative our initial guess. So then we keep this right-hand side still, keep this right-hand side, f prime of x naught. So again, this is saying, let's just say, for example, uh, x is equal to one half. That was our that, that is our oscillating point. It, it's obviously not, but as an example, let's say that it is. Well, if it were the oscillating point, then the tangent line that we construct for this function at x is equal to one half would have to intersect the x-axis at x is equal to negative one half. And same thing when we make a tangent line at x is equal to negative one half. It would have to intersect the x-axis at one half if these were oscillating points. That's what this is saying. So let's actually find the oscillating points for this function here. Let's just plug in what we have. So we have negative x naught is equal to x naught minus f of x naught. So we'll just evaluate this function at x naught. So we have x naught cubed minus x naught over, and then our derivative evaluated at x naught. So that's 3x naught squared minus 1. 3x naught squared minus 1. And now all we have to do is solve for x naught. So let's do that. Let's, let's add this whole big term over here and let's add this guy over. So we have x naught cubed minus x naught over 3x naught squared minus 1. And that is equal to adding this guy over 2x naught. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3x naught squared minus 1. And I'm left with x naught cubed minus x naught is equal to 2x naught times 3x naught squared minus 1. And then we can distribute these guys. So we have x naught cubed minus x naught is equal to 6x naught cubed and then minus 2x naught minus 2x naught. Okay. So let's get these cube terms on one side and our x naught x naught terms on this other side. So we have x naught is equal to 5x naught cubed, 5x naught cubed, and we can divide both sides by an x naught, and we're left with, let's see here, we're going to be left with 1 fifth is equal to x naught squared 
and then square root, taking the square root of both sides, we have plus or minus the square root of one fifth is equal to x naught. So this right here, this right here it are our oscillating points. If we apply Newton's method and take our initial guess to be the positive square root of one fifth or the negative square root of one fifth, all we're going to do is bounce back and forth between them and not make any progress with Newton's method. So again, graphically, let's see what that looks like. Square root of one fifth is a little less than one half. So that's going to be like somewhere right in here, somewhere right in here and somewhere right in there. And then let's see when, when we make a tangent line, we'll connect these guys up. It's going to look something like this, something like this. And you get this parallelogram looking shape here. And again, you apply Newton's method, it's going to come up here, and then you apply Newton's method, and it's just keep going back and forth. So that's why we call it an oscillating point. And again, this is only for functions that look like this, but this is all that we're going to have you deal with if we ask you to find an oscillating point. So in summary, Newton's method has a few weaknesses that you need to be cognizant of. That shouldn't scare you from using Newton's method because it's wonderful, but it should help you make more informed decisions when using it.